Are you tired of the old-fashioned dungeon crawl? Are you above all the monotony of soldiers marching into battle? Maybe you just get squeamish at the slightest sight of- Is that blood? Oh, no, no, hold on. I just need to- <laughs> In any case, if you want to avoid all that combat nonsense, well, in 5th edition, there's rules for that. So you want to play a pacifist character. Let's define that real fast. For this build, we're going to do everything we can to avoid combat. That is, not ever make a direct attack or deal any damage. As a disclaimer, it's important to let your DM and party know that this is what you're planning on doing early on in character creation, so that they can plan accordingly. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk. Literally, the best way to avoid combat is going to be talking, whether we're using the persuasion skill, or the deception skill, or even the intimidation skill. These three skills, along with some light RP, can allow you to talk your way out of most scraps. You can try persuading guards to let you off with a fine, or scaring a band of goblin raiders away with empty threats, or convincing a bunch of guards that it was really that band of goblin raiders over there that did it in the first place. All these skills scale off of charisma, so we're going to want charisma to be our main stat. To that end, let's take Variant Human for the actor feat, which not only ups our charisma, but also allows us to imitate any voice we previously heard. Ain't that an nifty deception tool? Well, with all this charisma and desire not to fight, let's start as a bard, which will allow us to become proficient in the three aforementioned social skills. We want to take five levels in Bard, mostly to get those sweet, sweet third level spell slots, but we'll get to those a little later. First, we get Bardic Inspiration to assist in saving throws for our party members, and that keeps them alive without violence. Then at second level, we get Jack of All Trades, which lets us take any skill we aren't proficient in and add half of our proficiency to it anyway, making us an actual factual skill machine. At level three, we get extra spicy with expertise. We can take two skills and double our proficiency to them. With a plus eight in both persuasion and deception, our tongue will be the only weapon we need. We we also get to revisit an old favorite, the Bardic College of Glamour. Ah! Now, as a musical cartoon political power princess, we use the feature Mantle Inspiration to mobilize our party into militant action. However, here, we are going to focus on the fact that the extra 60 feet of movement we give does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So, if we were to get ambushed by, say, a band of goblin raiders that may be upset about certain allegations that we may or may not have levied against them to a certain group of town guards, we can help the party make a quick and safe getaway. Because while we can always act as support while our comrades do some dirty work, it's always best not to fight at all. Once we get to 4th level, we can take the racial feat Prodigy, which is only for humans and half-races. This lets us train in an extra skill, probably insight or investigation, and more importantly, it lets us expertise another skill, and that's our third social skill at double proficiency. So, quick math, by level 5, with an 18 cha, we should have a plus 10 to persuasion, deception, and intimidate. And hey, speaking of 5th level, let's talk about spells! At this point, we can cast spells up to level 3, and we know 8 spells overall. Now, our goal is to control situations and stop them from escalating to violence, or to quickly stop a fight that's already raring to go without harming anything. So what helps us do that? For some highlights, Calm Emotions, a spell that makes a group of people indifferent to you if they can't pass a wisdom save. Suggestion, a spell so potent that I've heard of DMs who limit it to only 3 words at their table, but still a simple go home or walk away or turn yourself in will get the job done. Hypnotic Pattern, probably your best disengage tool as it can painlessly render many enemies completely harmless. Plus, anyone who did pass their save now has to spend their time waking those up who didn't, so you should be good on time to escape. Now what to do past level 5? Hmm. I mean we could just stick with Bard, but have I ever suggested you not multi-class? No. No I have not. When I think about pacifist heroes, I think about folks who have a habit of making weird and wacky inventions to save the day at the last second against insurmountably preposterous odds. Like that one guy. Oh what's his name? Doctor... Doctor something? Right! Dr. MacGyver. So let's multi-class into Artificer, more specifically, the Alchemist Artificer. With the Alchemist feature Experimental Elixir that we get at third level, we can craft potions. If we craft during downtime, it costs nothing, but we end up with one of six random options. But for one action in a first level spell slot, we can make the potion we need at that given moment. All of the potions are useful in their own way, but the healing, swiftness, and flight potions are the most important to avoiding fights. With enough downtime, you can give your party 10 minutes of airborne uptime to avoid dangerous streets or get right to the top of that castle without dealing with any of the nasty enemies inside. Three levels in Artificer really just opens up your utility. With the right tool for the job, you can always have what you need to accomplish whatever carefully, or I'll be honest about myself, sometimes not so carefully, concocted task your DM has set out for you. Plus, you also get the most important first level spell in the game. Grease. Yes, you can Kevin McAllister about and slick up any surface that exists to deter pursuers with a series of harmless pratfalls and fumbles. So in short, this build really utilizes the utility and skill monkeying that these classes have to offer. And with the right party and a little ingenuity, you can set aside all conflict, consequence free. Now if you excuse me, there seems to be a band of angry goblin raiders at my door. I'm sure it's fine. Huh. Toodles. Ta-da. 
Hey guys, we'd like to thank our friends at Dice Dungeons for sponsoring this video. We've talked about them before. You know they have great dice like metal dice or uh, acrylic dice and a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different patterns. They're incredible and if you like them, you can use the code DOORMONSTER for 10% off your purchase uh, on their website. They've also got little character coins, so if you don't want to use a full-blown miniature, you can just use these little one-inch coins for uh, that have like character classes like Paladin or Barbarian or whatnot on them. Um, and they're also, this month, running a Kickstarter for something called Condition Coins, which are little rings that fit around your miniatures to let you know whether or not you've been poisoned or blound or if you're unconscious or whatnot. I think they're super cool. I've already backed them, and you should too. Howdy guys, and now it's that time of the video where I get to talk about stuff that's already happened that you've already watched. Ha! Huh. Joke's on you. Uh, so we're gonna do go over comments that y'all left about uh, both the Nope Goat video and the Kinetisys Avatar video. Starting with the Kinetisys Avatar video, because it's the farthest one back. Some people were concerned that I was taking a minus two in my key stat for going with Sam Sarin. There's a couple things about that. If you're sitting at a, tab at a table that has uh, that's very stat competitive, if you need to be like sort of min-maxed for your table, obviously you can do something like Oriad instead or whatever you wanna do. Um, but if you're at a table that's, uh, that, where it's not quite as competitive, I really like uh, taking minuses to uh, important things sometimes, especially if I'm going through a build that's like trying to learn how to be what I'm good at. I think it captures the, wow, I'm the most important per person in the world and they just told me, oh no, feeling pretty well. But you're right, it's not exactly like uh, the most intuitive way forward. I just really couldn't pass up Sam Sarin since it's exactly what we were looking for. Other things people mentioned was uh, somebody mentioned going for a Terra Kineticist instead as an archetype, and I looked at that one, I really considered doing that one, and I think it's a, it's a really great uh, alternative uh, just lets you get all the uh, the elements pretty quickly, but it is very reliant on where you are, which didn't quite match the flavor quite as well. But if you just like want to have the, the flavor of uh, having more of the elements on hand like early on in your uh, in your run, then that's really good. I think um, a lot of people are, have a, really, a lot of great ideas. Somebody said so they want to see me demystify the Mystic class or uh, the painting behind me, which. Um, uh, no, but the, the Mystic class, I will. I, that sounds like a good candidate at some point. I still have one on the on the slate for crafting rules. Those are it for that's it for the Canisys video. Then on to Nope Goat. Um, somebody mentioned that you can only subtract movement speed with Slasher once, and so attacking twice won't get them down to 10 feet. Oops, that's okay though. You're still not going to get anywhere because uh, 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 with the Nope Goat wins. Uh, uh, so many of the comments are uh, referencing the fact that we are using magic to uh, get rid of magic. And that's because only magic can fight magic. Because that's if you could just fight magic without magic, why why would you need magic? If if if, if fist was good to to break magic, we wouldn't need magic fist. But no, it's kind of silly, isn't it? Um, and then uh, lastly, somebody said that uh, 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 Galia is here and she's killing some wizards, and uh, that's true. It's, the, it's, it's the, she's in the she's in the book, right? They've got a the picture of her in the book. I don't know. Matt, put up that picture. It's a great picture. That's the note goat. She's the real note goat. The real note goat is inside all of us, except it's also this 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 note goat right here. Bye!